Welcome to another edition of the Dementia Care Partner Talk Show. Now, here's dementia care expert Tifa Snow and your host, Greg Phelps. Hello and welcome to the Dementia Care Partners podcast. I'm your host, Greg Phelps, and joining me once again is Tipa Snow. And in between researching topics for our podcast, I also happen to read something called Sunday Good News, uh, which you seem to have a little bit of involvement in, Tipa. And a couple of lines leapt out at me. Getting to know dementia, our community series. And what, this was six years in production? Do you guys work slow or is it going to be sort of one of these series that goes on and on? Or, oh, you know, and I so- like dementia. No, actually, actually, I did the initial and then you and Charlene did some work on it. And then, and then unfortunately it got tracked over to a sidebar and we were create, trying to create the resources that went with it. And then that sort of, we did some switching about and then there was COVID. And then, so ultimately, ta-da! It's back and finished and ready. And so we have now what used to be our six part community series, which is now getting to know dementia. And it's our community series. <laughs> so if we were to break this down into the six parts, mm. what would those be? And are, are they of interest to specific groups? Like as if I'm just on the sidelines watching one thing, can I go to, to section three and skip two, four, or five? Absolutely. Yeah. And so we designed it as each each of these sessions can stand alone, but they also come together. So, you know, getting to know dementia is, first of all, what are you experiencing? Is what your sort of experiences is just like normal aging or is this something a little different? And sort of looking at some of the variations that are available, that's that's session one. And then looking at, you know, so if we do acknowledge what we might be looking at as a dementia, recognizing, wow, there's different kinds and there are different kinds of things that happen for folks and changes in their brain. And so if that's what's happening, what would we, on the other side of that, what would we want to be sort of cognizant of, aware of? Um, And then we have sort of progression, recognizing dementia progresses and a way of looking at it that you know, it's like, oh, okay, so maybe this is what's going on, or that's what's going on, or, you know, where are we in all this, um, so that I can do a better sort of like matching up and awareness piece. We have a section on advocacy, like how do you advocate, um, knowing what some of the reality is of dementia, what are all the resources you're going to need, It's another one, you know, what kind of resources are you going to need? And then, you know, a second piece on like, if not you, who (laughs) kind of thing. So recognizing, you know, I could be a bystander, but if it's not, if I'm not the person to do it, who is, I mean, who might be somebody who could be involved if I am the person living with dementia, what might be something I want to know about? So it's really designed um, to just introduce a lot of topics and to, raise awareness for community groups or faith-based groups or public sector personnel or families or professionals or because we just you know there's not as much known out there as we wish and latest statistics somewhere around 75 percent of people living with dementia don't get a diagnosis around the world so that's a bit of a problem i think this comes in a package. Can I present it sort of one, two, three, four, five, six? Or if I start reading and looking at one, because you should do that in advance of you know presenting it to the public. And I realize that the people I'm talking to are beyond this, beyond this. Can I sort of sneak up a little bit? Or should I just have all that background knowledge in my brain so I can actually uh-huh. answer maybe a question or two? Oh, now, Greg, why would you want to be able to be responsive to what people might ask you? Because you may be a certain place, but you don't know where your partners are. And you may think your people who are coming to this, oh, yeah, yeah, no, they'll know that. Um, We are constantly amazed at what people are aware of, what people are unaware of, what people believe coming in. And if we don't talk about things openly, then beliefs become, you know, these things in the background that can interfere. And so by going over what we think are common constructs and that people say, oh, yeah, yeah, my mom had dementia. It's like that (laughs) that turns out to me to know I don't know a lot yet. All I know is what you think happened. And I don't know what the story was. And if I have several of you in my audience, it might be best if we just go back over what some of the basics are, because you might actually be surprised at what you find out is what 
I have found out. I've been surprised many times in sessions. <laughs> now, a lot of other material that Positive Approach has produced over the years is for people who are trained in mm -hmm. presenting this material. It sounds to me like if I took this as an amateur and did a little bit of reading and rehearsing that I could probably present it so that people would understand it in some way, shape or form. They're, they're, uh... not, getting, they're not getting TIPA in a box, but they are getting material. They are. They are getting materials and they're getting little video clips and they're very short little clips. And there are scripts that help you know what to say and try to encourage you not to go off the deep end in personal belief sets, but instead like stick with the script a bit. And if you do that and allow people these opportunities to explore things, I mean, we have a lot of the things that, you know, held us up for a bit. We're trying to figure out how to take um, like cards. And so now you can print your cards, laminate them, or you could print them and give them away that allow people to manipulate things, to handle things, to read things, to uh, work with things. And, you know, you can set it up, I'll get them back or, you know, I'll give them away, depending, you know, on what you choose to do. But we've tried to make it so user-friendly that it could be used by volunteers who simply are trying hard to reach out to other individuals and yet they need some resources that are up to date and are user friendly and are dementia friendly, but dementia skillful friendly, not just nice, but actually based on uh, evidence and skill. So, yeah. So if, if I purchase this for ABC facility, I get the box and I look at it and it's, you know, sort of making sense. Can I phone somebody and say, there's a couple little things here I don't really understand. Have you got some, some actual human support people? Oh, Greg, have we ever not had human support? Well, maybe, but we try really hard. So if you want to get up with us online, we have chat or we have, you can do our 800 number or you can do info at Tipa Snow and you could do products at Tipa Snow as well, because we're happy to get back with folks, email, call, chat, because really and truly, if it doesn't work for you, then you won't use it. And our goal of creating this stuff is so that it's available for you to use. And people then have an opportunity to learn that otherwise might never find that space or time to do that. And they're short segments. I mean, that's the other thing. And we've tried to create them short, engaging, uh, and offer the opportunity to have conversation afterwards. So yeah. you, you could break it down into, we're going to do two sessions Monday night, uh, two more sessions on Wednesday night, two more sessions yeah. on Friday night, have coffee, tea, have a discussion. It, it's flexible in that manner because with our schedules today, you know, what, what is spare time? Yeah, yeah. And it also encourages people to come together, which I think more and more evidence is bringing people together is a key to actually starting a community. I mean, yes, we can do it on Zoom, but in fact, coming together as human beings changes a dynamic. And that dynamic turns out to be pretty important if we want to build relationships that are supportive with one another. Tifa, thank you very much. It sounds like a great project and I'm hoping people will uh, take advantage of it. Yeah, me too, Greg. And thank you. You've been listening to the Dementia Care Partners podcast brought to you by Positive Approach to Care. And this month, we want to highlight our PAC designated communities. These are groups of people who are working hard to make a positive difference in the world of dementia care and support. If you're part of an organization or agency and are interested in becoming a PAC designated organization, contact us 877-877-1671 or info at tipasnow.com. Hi, I'm Tipa Snow. And you just found our YouTube channel and watched one of our videos. I'm the owner and founder of Positive Approach to Care. Thanks for watching. And if you liked, if you have a comment about, or you would, please share it with people you know. Ooh, and if you haven't yet done it, consider subscribing. We'll let you know when the next new video comes out. And you might want to visit our website, www.tipasnow.com, where you'll find other resources as well. See you there.